Hi, I'm Mark Pivak, CTO at FBR, and this is Throwback Thursday. As we roll out the gate, I thought it'd be a good opportunity for us to look back at the development of Hadrian over the last 15 years. So we'll be going back into the archives, looking at some of the things that worked and some of those things that didn't work, and what made it on the Hadrian X that's rolling out the gate today. So what we're looking at here is the first prototype which we built, which was a double arm robot with one arm putting down mortar and the other arm handling bricks. So this was basically a minimal change approach to what bricklayers have already been doing and have been doing for the last 6,000 years. When we got further into it, we discovered that there's actually a lot of problems with mortar, such as the difficulty of mixing it and getting the consistency exactly right, and also the thermal bridging that uh, mean that mortar's not really a great environmental product and that the structural adhesives that we use now provide a much lower thermal bridge. And what we discovered in this process is that conventional six axis industrial robots really don't have the dynamic performance to enable them to be just put on the end of a boom and expect it to work. This is a picture of our second prototype, which is the Hadrian 105, uh, built on an excavator base. And what we're looking at here is just early days of some of the brick handling uh, from the shuttles. And once again, we're looking at smaller bricks. These are maxi bricks, so they're 2.2 standard brick equivalents. So Hadrian 105 had an externally mounted chain conveyor, which took individual bricks up the boom. Um, this was a good system, but we could see that there were better ways of doing it. One of the Big issues with that is there's start-stop motion and you're dealing with a big chain of bricks which you have to bring to rest. And also, as the boom changes geometry, the length of the chain changes. So our new shuttle system where we have individual shuttles on Hadrian 109 uh, is a much more flexible and independent system. And here we're looking at the handover from the laying head across to the the laying arm. These are just real early days of our first first prototype, so we've come a long way from there. Here we see 105 just building a little practice brick wall. This is without DST, the, the lay head's held fairly firmly there, but it's sort of the first step on the path to um, some of the building demonstration we did back in 2015. So Hadrian 105 used uh, quite a few shuttles before the bricks went onto the conveyor. And here we just see the D-Hacker, which is quite similar to what we use on 109. So this kind of basic technology is, has come across pretty well. It's different in detail, but the basic concepts are the same. Okay, so one of the things you'll notice in this video is that the grip of fingers are quite long. This machine was designed to handle only one size of brick, whereas Hadrian 109 is designed to handle a variety of different brick sizes. Uh, and to do that, if you're working with thinner bricks, obviously you've got to have a shorter bricks which aren't so tall. And also this, this uh, gripper was hydraulically controlled, uh, which meant we could really only deal with one width of brick. So the new Hadrian 109 grippers are electric servo driven. So we have a lot of flexibility on, on how we grab the brick. We can grip, uh, move the bricks offset from center if we want to, and we can handle different width bricks. So we've got a lot more flexibility. One of the big problems with automated bricklaying machines like Hadrian is just fitting everything into a size that can be transported. We're basically taking all the equipment which would be laid out in a big factory and trying to squeeze it onto a, a vehicle size thing which we can deploy to a building site. Some of the movements become quite cramped and, and complicated and consequently slowly so one of the things we tried to do with 109 is enable faster movements between different locations to get the laying speed up. So here you'll see uh, Hadrian 105 with the end of the boom supported and placing bricks, which is one of the easier things to do when you haven't got all the dynamic problems to solve. And then the next step is to introduce DST and be able to do it with a, with a moving boom. So this video is looking at one of the concepts we had for glue application. On this one, we're moving the nozzles over a stationary brick. One of the problems with this is it couldn't work with a boom which was heading up vertical. So on Hadrian 109, we've got a flipper which uh, grabs hold of the brick and brings the brick horizontal before applying the glue. That can handle all different kinds of boom angles. Back in 2015, we did our first house size structural demonstration. It wasn't a whole house, it was a 
a small, basically a couple of bedroom size structure. And we built that with maxi size bricks, which are about two standard brick equivalents, and uh, used adhesive. And we built this one basically to show that the concept was viable. One of the big issues with the Hadrian 105 machine was just its sheer size. It was built on a 25 tonne excavator base and ended up being over dimensioned, so it had to be transported everywhere on a low loader and it was over height, over length, over width, so it needed escorts and western power to lift up power lines and all that sort of thing. So if it got to site and could build a lot of houses, it would be quite a practical kind of machine. But if you need to move around to a lot of different locations, then it's not really viable. So that's why we've ended up with Hadrian 109 being truck mounted. Here's a great time lapse of Hadrian 109 being built back in 2018. Uh, it's built on top of a standard 6x4 truck, so they're pretty common and you know localised for different areas of the world. So to go to the global market, it really just means we have to adapt the Hadrian to mount onto the local, local machines, which are basically the same all around, just slightly different in detail. Here we see the machine going outside for the first time and a lot of happy builders there. So when you first turn on a machine, uh, you don't expect the whole thing to work all at once. And here's a little video of Adrian doing some lay head exercises. It's limbering up, getting ready to lay some bricks, making sure it all moves properly and is performing how we designed it. And these are some of the first bricks that Adrian ever picked up and handled. And here we're really just testing that the gripper works and that the laying arm's repeatable and can come back and it's just sort of getting everything exercised and, and making sure it's working how we think it work. Here's some of the first little structures that we built with Hadrian. In the background you'll see Jane, who's our little remote robot. It's got a camera on it so we can drive in and get really close to the action without putting people in uh, harm's way. Building little pier structures like this gives the machine a good exercise. We can test the accuracy of it across different heights and make sure that it's building a nice square structure. So here we are building one of our first full-size houses. Uh, so we started off giving Hadrian a little exercise and then we started off building piers and doing calibration and making sure everything's square. And this is one of the first bigger structures that we built with it. Uh, we did this one in, in two parts and here we're using F-blocks to nice big insulated blocks. Once again, we've got Jane wandering around, keeping an eye on things, getting in close to the action. One of the funny things though is it happens gradually. So you're not like we've finally done it or you know the baby's popped out or the boat's been launched. It's, um, it's been real intimate involvement for a long time and it's a whole series of steps. So yeah, it's been really fun looking back at some of the journey there because you kind of forget a bit how much has happened over the last 15 years. So this is the first time we built outside, uh, out the back of our workshop. We were looking at different ways of loading the machine. Here we were using a forklift with a rotator. In some areas around the world, they deliver bricks without uh, pallets. So we are just looking at how we could handle bricks that were delivered in packs without pallets. Obviously on, on a sandy side, a, a forklift like that is not really great. So we changed over to telehandler and we figured out that the easiest way to deal with the packs of bricks is when they're on pallets. So that's something which we, we've changed. Our first outside build will be done with a smaller cement block. Uh, these F blocks, the big ones are equivalent to about 12 standard brick equivalents. Whereas the smaller CMU type blocks which we're building with are about four blocks. Uh, here we're looking at bricks coming through the various brick processing parts of Hadrian and DST and you can see we're building outside in day, night, wind, hot, cold. Inside Hadrian there's a, a diamond saw which can cut all kinds of bricks, be they concrete, uh, the F-block material or clay blocks handles all of those really well. It's got an inbuilt dust extraction system, so we contain silica from the bricks and um, keep the rest of the machine clean. You can see there's quite a bit of wind in these images here. Adrian works pretty well outside in wind. Some nice close-ups there. You can see that the blocks come down pretty accurately. We're always constantly improving on that as we develop laser technology and make it better and better uh, to the point where you can just 
drop-in window frames and doors and lintels and everything fits where it should. So as we've gone along, we've built more complex structures and um, here we are building inside, uh, but bigger structures. Uh, these are houses that are commonly built in WA, you know, similar size and plan shape. We're really sort of working on actual house designs here as they're built in the suburbs and uh, that's where we're headed. So one of the big reasons we build inside is uh, a lot of people are very interested in what we do uh, but a lot of our development work is confidential. Um, we learn a lot, we don't always get things exactly right the first time and we develop, we change things, we improve things, we're always working on our safety, speed, accuracy and waste reduction. You know, that's our valuable IP and we don't just want to give it away. So a lot of our development work we do inside and it also enables us to work year round. Yeah, so a lot of things have happened with Hadrian over the years. Started off with a two-arm robot uh, working with mortar and we've gone to more advanced structural adhesives which had better thermal performance and are a lot stronger and easier for us to work with. We've gone through working with a, a wide range of brick types ranging from clay maxi bricks through to F blocks and concrete CMUs, European pyrotherms, all, all kinds of bricks. We've done it inside, outside, on our premises and we're about to do it outside in the suburbs. And um, yeah, look, it's really great to see what started off as a dream 15 years ago actually get to something which is commercially viable. Thanks for watching, I'm Mark Hibbeck and I'll see you out in the suburbs.